A major threat for severe weather is evolving on Friday, March 31st, across the upper Midwest, including Iowa into Illinois, Missouri, and points down south. We're talking about a potential high-end threat of tornadoes, as well as damaging wind and hail. Let's take a look at the severe weather threat on Friday. Here is the official categorical risk by the Storm Prediction Center. All these graphics we will be looking at, by the way, courtesy of Pivotal Weather. And you can see that big ol' enhanced risk. This is the first time a day three enhanced risk has been issued for the state of Iowa in a month of March on record since they started doing these five category severe weather risks in 2015. So just showing kind of the confidence level uh, that we are seeing with that severe weather threat. The um, percentages for severe weather, you can see 30% hatched. Uh, the entire enhanced risk area is hatched. That favors the higher end and stronger end potential of those severe thunderstorms. Let's take a look at uh, kind of what the NAM is showing. This is the North American model. Um, here we are at 21Z. And you'll notice we do have that initiation. 18Z, the rain is out of here. The morning rain is going to be a key player here. And according to the NAM, it's out of here early. Uh, that gives the surface temperatures time to warm up, some sunshine to build back in as well. And then we have initiation around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Again, at least according to the North American model here. That initial storm development mode will likely be... Uh, more discreet in nature. However, it will quickly turn into a big old line of thunderstorms as it races off to the east. Just given the amount of forcing that will be in play, I think this is pretty much inevitable. This will translate into a more widespread damaging wind threat. However, there still will be that tornado threat as well because the low level spin on the atmosphere this day will be very high end. Let's take a look at the dew points. We'll go back towards initiation. Uh, you got upper 50s to lower 60s as storms are starting to form. Uh, typically, the deeper that we get into spring, you know, those you know, near 60 degree dew points aren't as exciting. But for this type of an event, uh, it's certainly supportive of severe weather for a number of reasons. Not just what's happening at the surface, but just above your head as well. Let's plop out a uh, sounding here. Let's go kind of ahead of initiation, kind of just east and northeast of the Des Moines metro area. And here is a sounding for the day. Again, this is valid at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I want to show a few different things on this sounding. For one, uh, you can see big old fat cape here. Pretty good lap rate across the whole uh, atmosphere. A 66 degree temperature with a 60 degree dew point. Again, the dew point's not super high. But for this type of event, you don't really need them to be that crazy. When you look at those LCLs, very low LCLs here, less than a kilometer uh, across the whole atmosphere here. Um, in some places, 500 meters. Those very low LCLs, very important for these tornadoes, especially in the very early parts of spring. And keep in mind, this time of year in Iowa, it's still very early spring for us. Um, some other things to look at here. The 0 to 3 kilometer cape is at over 200. Again, that is a very supportive severe weather parameter here. Let's look at some of the wind shear profiles. Uh, the surface to 1 kilometer uh, SRH storm relative helicity over 200. If you're over 100, that tends to be pretty supportive for tornadoes. We're over 200 in that case with the actual shear at 33 knots. So that's very supportive of rotating storms. If we extend that up to the surface to six kilometers, really the kind of that storm level, that shear is at 77 knots. Typically for severe weather, if you're around 40 knots of shear from surface to six kilometers, you're going to get severe weather. In this case, we're nearly double that uh, in this uh, average out sounding here. Um, some other things to keep in mind when you look at the hodograph. Yeah, we got some kind of hooking here. It's not the most amazing uh, looking hodograph. This does get um, more intimidating, though, the further east that you get as the... Uh, if you can believe it, the global jet even gets even stronger. Uh, but I also want to point out that storm motion here. 57 knots. These storms will be moving at 60 to 70 miles per hour, more than a mile a minute in some instances. So the reaction time that you will have to these storms will be limited. And I do expect those polygons issued by the, weather, or the, the National Weather Service will be much larger as well. 
So that is something that bears watching very closely. Um, as we go off to the east, you can see we still see dew points back in the upper 50s, lower 60s, and that translates into the uh, you know the Great Lakes region before the sev severe weather threat begins to wind down. Looking back at the composite reflectivity, uh, you can see that big old line of storms here. Uh, that does appear to be the case. That does appear to be where this event is uh, evolving and translating into with time, probably from discrete development of a few discrete storms capable of tornadoes into a big old QLCS quasi-linear convective system. Um, I want to talk about the 500 millibar pattern here because uh, this is a very key thing uh, that we have seen evolve over the last several days, most notably the European model. The Euro was more of a broad trough, uh, wasn't super strong with the upper level pattern. But in this case, we are seeing the models really trend towards this closed low at 500 millibar, a strong, mature, low pressure center. And with time, uh, that 500 millibar uh, trough definitely turns more negatively tilted as well. So we see that negative tilt. That negatively tilted trough is important for a number of reasons. It increases your wind shear across the profile of the atmosphere that also allows middle and upper level cold air advection above very warm advection near the surface. So that increases your um, thermodynamic atmosphere, that increases your instability through the profile of the atmosphere. And you'll notice here with the way the pattern is set up, at 500 millibar, you got your left exit region right over eastern Iowa around seven o'clock, those uh, as that line of storms is moving on through. So you have that upper level divergence, you have that omega, you have that forced rising motion in the atmosphere, and that will keep sustained storms going uh, for quite a long period of time. I wanna pull up the, uh, the um, European here. We'll go on more of a national level. And uh, what I wanna do is kinda show how the model trend has been. Um, I'll try to loop, here we go. So this is kind of through time. I'll look at the 500 millibar chart and you'll see it's you know not the most uh, appealing 500 millibar pattern, but then through time, you got a stronger jet streak, still kind of positively tilted here. Uh, then you kind of get more neutral and then within the last about two or three runs, you see a real significant change in that 500 millibar pattern, closing off that upper level low also becoming more negatively tilted. Again, that favors increasing wind shear, increasing mid and upper level uh, cold air advection over that very warm surface, therefore increasing your instability. So that trend in the European model is really notable with this event compared to the GFS, which has been very consistent. If you look at how the GFS has handled this through time, um, you can see like through time, it has really kept a closed 500 millibar low uh, really during the duration of this event. This is something I have seen throughout the winter in the upper Midwest. Uh, the GFS, we used to call it the Goofus or Garbage Forecast System. It has done tremendously well uh, this winter with forecasting winter storms, significantly tracking those winter storm tracks. Uh, the GFS has done a really, really good job. Um, I think this might be the year the GFS is really a useful model for a change. So really exciting to see that. Um, the American models are really making a lot of room here. If you look at the 500 millibar temperature, and I want to look at the GFS here. Um, let's go back to just a single image. We'll go back to around the time the storms are forming. Go out to regional, regional view. Uh, we'll go back to around 21Z. And you can see very cold air at 500 millibar advecting in below 20 degrees below zero up there celsius and you see that continues and again that very very cold air at 500 millibar that's over your two meter temperatures you know in the upper 50s to lower 60s and right as storms are you know pre prior to storms ongoing you're talking upper 60s to near 70 degrees so again that change in temperature with height also equally as important as a change in wind speed and direction with height. So if we pull up the uh, dew points here on the GFS, you do see a similar story, upper 50 to lower 60 degree dew points. We pop up the uh, precipitation type, we'll see those storms that are kind of forming here. Again, this is a much lower resolution model compared to the NAM, but you see that kind of line of storms with some embedded cores. That initiation appears to once again be around 4 o'clock uh, in central Iowa, perhaps along about I-35. 
If you look at some of the severe weather parameters, we'll pull the supercell composite. We'll do an average sounding here over, say, Delaware County in Iowa. Here we are again at 4 o'clock, and you notice a lot of very similar things to the NAM. Um, you had a very low LCL, very important in this case. You got a little, a little skinnier of a cape, but still pretty good. You're looking at surface-based cape, 1100, same with the mixed layer as well. Um, and again, your surface to 6 kilometers shear at 65 knots. Um, and of course, you look at the photograph, you got that storm motion there at 52 knots. So these storms will be booking it. Um, very, very quick. It'll be a very difficult event to chase. Um, that is for certain. Uh, but that's kind of a look at the overall severe weather threat coming up on Friday, March 31st, the last day of March. We have not had any severe weather in the state of Iowa in March. Not that unusual. In fact, we haven't had severe weather for a couple of years, the last 15 years. Uh, 2019, 2018, 2015... Those are three of the top, or three of the most recent years. I remember we did not have severe weather in a month of March. Last year, 2022, of course, we had the winter set day, March 5th, where we had that EF4 tornado and a lot of tornadoes in the state of Iowa. Um, that, of course, was a severe weather day in March. It's not that unusual to not have <laughs> severe weather in March. Again, uh, five out of the last 15 years didn't have any. We typically see about 22 reports of severe weather. We've not had any so far this March. That will likely change in the state of Iowa coming up on Friday. If you have any questions, drop a comment. Let me know if you like this video. We've done a few of these forecasting videos before. You wanted to see more, so figure let's keep doing them. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again at the next video. And you better believe we'll be tracking the severe weather on Friday, either on air or in the field. Not exactly sure how that will play out yet on Friday. Thanks for watching.